Hello Grade 11s and welcome. Today we introduce the word subtends and the theorem dealing with the angle at the center of the circle. From now we will be using the word subtends frequently. It means opposite to. For example, if the points A and B subtend at angle C, then angle ACB is opposite to the line AB. We can now extend the concept of subtending to circles. Points A and B lie on the circumference of a circle. Angle C is opposite to arc AB. Therefore, we say arc AB subtends angle C. Let's join John and Kanya as they introduce our next theorem. This is what the theorem states. The angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle is double the size of an angle subtended by the same arc at the circumference of the circle. We can call this the angle at the center theorem. Let's work through this statement carefully to work out what it actually proves. What is the angle subtended by an arc at the center of a circle? If we draw a circle center O and create an angle at the center by drawing lines AO and OB, do you see that the angle AOB is subtended by this smaller arc between A and B on the circumference? Now, look at the rest of the statement. It says that this angle we've identified is double the size of an angle subtended by the same arc at the circumference of the second. On the diagram, this means we can create an angle APB with P on the circumference. But we must be careful to make sure that this new angle is also subtended by the same arc AB. Here are three examples of angles that are all subtended by the same arc AB. It is useful to put two fingers onto A and B. See the arc between them and then trace the lines to P to see the angle made at the circumference. We can use any of these diagrams in our proof. What we need to prove is that angle AOB is equal to twice angle APB. Okay, I will lay out the given and required to prove information for this theorem. I will also give you a construction that will help towards the proof. Then you can try to work out a proof for yourself. Are you ready? We are given a circle with center O and with A and B on the circumference. We are also given angle AOB, OA and OB. A point P is on the circumference to create angle APB. Construct PO and extend to R. You are required to prove that angle AOB equals twice angle APB. O2 equals P2 plus B. Do you know why, Kanya? Because it's the exterior angle of triangle BPR. Correct. And OB equals? OP, because they are equal radii. Yes. So P2 equals B, isosceles triangle. Therefore, O2 equals twice P2. Similarly, O1 equals P1 plus A because it is the exterior angle of triangle APO. And OA equals OP, equal radii. So P1 equals A, isosceles triangle. Therefore, O1 equals twice P1. Adding O1 and O2, we get 2 times P1 plus 2 times P2, and this is the same as saying angle AOB equals twice angle APB. 
This theorem is very helpful for solving geometry problems. Can you give me an example? If you are given an angle at the center, you can use the theorem to say that it is twice the size of the angle at the circumference. Or the angle at the circumference is half the size of the angle at the center. As long as we are sure that both angles are subtended by the same arc. Obviously, if you know the size of the angle at the circumference, then the angle at the center can also be worked out exactly. For example, the angle HOK is a straight angle at the center O, and it is 180 degrees. So we know that the angle at J is 90 degrees. This is useful in other riders, and we can say that the angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Thank you, John and Kanya. We need to be able to reproduce the proofs of the theorems, as well as apply them, their converses, and the results like the angle in a semicircle in proofs and riders. John and Kanya will help us to do this by working through typical questions which use the knowledge we have so far. Let's go back to them now. Let's see how you can use these theorems on some geometry problems. In the next three diagrams, calculate the value of the unknown angle x. The first one is easy. Do you want to try, Kanya? Start with the given. We know that angle k is 20 degrees. So angle x at the center will be twice that which equals 40 degrees. Good. What about this one? Can you calculate x? Angle k is 30 degrees and it's at the circumference, so angle JOH would be? JOH is 60 degrees because it's at the center. What else can you see? Look at OJH. Of course, OJ and OH are radii of the circle, so triangle OJH is isosceles. Very good observation. Does this help towards calculating X? Let's see what we know. We know that JOH is 60 and the other two angles are equal to each other. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. What does that tell you about the other two angles? Angle J and angle H together add up to 120 degrees, so they must both be 60 degrees. Good work, Kanye. Here is the next problem. Can you calculate angle X? Be careful. Do you see that angle X is an angle at the circumference? But which angle at the center is subtended by the same arc? It is the reflex angle KOJ, not the angle that is given as 120 degrees. You can work out its size. Easy, 240 degrees. And angle X will be half that, which is 120 degrees. That's correct. Thank you, John and Kanya. John makes a valuable point. We need to learn our theory in order to be able to apply it. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You will also be able to learn more about circle geometry on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s.